Hi class, in lesson 5.3 we will be writing equivalent ratios, learning targets for today. We will be writing ratios and scaling up and scaling down ratios. If you take a look at the key terms that you see in 5.3, uh, make sure that you refer back to your knowledge rating scale as far as the definitions that you came up with. If you did know these terms well or if you have seen or heard them, and uh, take a look at the definition you wrote and compare it to what you see in Lesson 5.3. We're actually going to start Problem 1 on page 320, uh, 326. So if you take a look up at the top, it says one of the rounds at the Math Quiz Bowl tournament is a speed round. A team of four students will represent Stewart Middle School in the speed round of the Math Quiz Bowl. One student of the team will be chosen to solve as many problems as possible in 20 minutes. The results from this week's practice are recorded in the table. So if you take a look at the table here, you can see that Kay had four problems correct in five minutes, Susan seven problems correct in 10 minutes, Doug had one problem correct in two minutes, and Mako had three problems correct in four minutes. Each quantity in the table is a rate. A rate is a ratio that compares two quantities that are measured in different units. The rate for each student in this situation is the number of problems solved per amount of time. So if you took, take a look at K's rate, her rate is four problems correct per five minutes. And this is an example, then, of how you can write that rate. Four problems correct to five minutes. So let's take a look at number six at the bottom of page 326. It says that we need to write the rates for the other three team members. So go ahead and do that with your group members for Susan, Doug, and Mako for A, B, and C. So here are the answers that you should have come up with. Uh, the rate for Susan was seven problems correct to 10 minutes, Doug one problem correct to two minutes, and Mako three problems correct to four minutes. Let's take a look at the top of page 327. It says when two ratios or rates are equivalent to each other, you can write them as a proportion. A proportion is an equation that states that two ratios are equal. You can write a proportion by placing an equal sign between the two equivalent ratios. Let's take a look at the example box in the middle of the page. It says you know that K got four problems correct per five minutes, so you can predict how many problems she could answer correctly in 20 minutes. So if you look at the first rate, four problems correct to five minutes, that would be equal to 16 problems correct in 20 minutes. So K can probably answer 16 problems correctly in 20 minutes. Underneath the example box, it says when you change a ratio to an equivalent ratio, with larger numbers, you are scaling up the ratio. Scaling up means you multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same factor. So if we take a look back at the example, you can see that they multiplied the problems correct, which was 4. 4 times 4 gives you 16. And then the minutes, which was 5. 5 times 4 gives you 20. So that's how you get your proportion uh, with those two equivalent ratios. I want to also mention that this is very similar to the work that we did when we were trying to find equivalent fractions. If we had the fraction 4 fifths and we wanted to figure out how many twentieths that would be equal to, we always multiplied by the fraction form of 1. So if we multiplied this particular fraction by 4 fourths, 4 times 4 would be 16, 5 times 4 would be 20. So 16 twentieths would be our equivalent fraction. The same goes then for when you are talking with ratios uh, like we saw in the example. All we are doing is using the, the phrase scaling up 
uh, instead of multiplying by the fraction form of 1. It is important to remember to write the numbers representing the same quantity in both numerators and in both denominators. It doesn't matter which quantity is in the numerator or denominator. It matters that the unit of measure is consistent among the ratios. So please make sure that you are always writing those correctly. So another way then that you could write equivalent ratios for K correctly solving problems in 20 minutes is this way. So instead of doing problems correct to minutes, we could do minutes to problems correct. We would have 5 to 4 would then be equal to 20 to 16. And again, we scaled up by 4 uh, in order to get our equivalent ratio and um, our proportion. So let's turn to page 328 and take a look at number 7. It says, use the scaling up method to determine the number of problems the student can probably solve in 20 minutes. Explain the scaling up factor you use to determine the equivalent ratio. So refer back to the previous page and the example that we just went over if you need to. Go ahead and do letter A, B, and C with your group members for Susan, Doug, and Mako. If we take a look at Susan for letter A, 7 to 10 would be equal to 14 to 20. I scaled the ratio up by multiplying each part by 2, so Susan can probably solve 14 problems correctly in 20 minutes. Uh, for Doug, for letter B, 1 to 2 would be equal to 10 to 20. I scaled the ratio up by multiplying each part by 10, so that means Doug can probably solve 10 problems correctly in 20 minutes. And finally, for Mako, 3 to 4 is equal to 15 to 20. I scaled the ratio up by multiplying each part by 5, so Mako can probably solve 15 problems correctly in 20 minutes. Let's continue practicing using the scaling up method. If you take a look at the bottom of page 328, it says the muffin variety packs baked by the healthy for you bakery come in a ratio of two blueberry muffins to five total muffins. Number eight says to scale up each muffin ratio to determine the unknown quantity. So I would like you to do uh, letter A all the way through letter F onto page 329 for number eight. Let's take a look at letter A. There would be 50 total muffins because I am scaling up by 10. For letter B, I would have 75 total muffins. I'm scaling up by 15. For letter C, I would have 40 blueberry muffins because I scaled up by 20. For letter D, I would have 125 total muffins. I scaled up by 25. And finally, for letter E, I would have 6 blueberry muffins. I scaled up by 3. For letter F, I would have 70 total muffins because I scaled up by 14. And if you refer back to our little helper here, uh, much like I talked about uh, previously, this is just like when we found e equivalent fractions, when we multiplied by the fraction form of 1. Now we're just using uh, the phrase scaling up. Let's take a look at page 330. Uh, up at the top it says when you change a ratio to an equivalent ratio with smaller numbers you are now scaling down the ratio. Scaling down means you divide the numerator and the denominator by the same factor. Scaling down a ratio often makes it easier to understand and more than likely sometimes you might have that ratio then in simplest form uh, like we talked about in one of the previous lessons. So let's take a look at number 9 to finish up for today. It says scale down each ratio to determine the unknown quantity. If we take a look at letter A, we would have one person because we scaled down by 3. And if we took a look at the same problem, much like we did when we were scaling up before and looked at this as a fraction, if we had three-ninths and we wanted to figure out how many thirds that would be equal to, we would be dividing by 
3 thirds, the fraction form of 1. 3 divided by 3 would get me my 1 third for my answer. So very similar to what we did again with uh, scaling up when we are scaling down. Uh, it is very similar to what we worked with uh, for equivalent fractions as far as dividing by the fraction form of 1. We're just using the phrase scaling down. Uh, so go ahead and do letters B through H on page 330 to finish up for today. If we take a look at letter B, we would have uh, three people for one hoagie, uh, scaled down by two. Uh, for letter C, four t-shirts, four track, uh, for, four track t-shirts for one person. I'm scaling down by 25. For letter D, I would have 12 tracks for every one CD. I'm scaling down by five for letter D. And for le letter E, I would have $8.75 for one ticket, and my scaling down factor would be three for letter E. For letter F, I would have $12 for one hour of work. I'm scaling down by 20. For letter G, I'm going to go 240 miles in four hours. I'm scaling down by three. And finally, for letter H, I would have one and a half gallons of red paint for every one gallon of yellow paint, and I'm scaling down by two. That's going to be it for Lesson 5.3 on Writing Equivalent Ratios. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.